Hey everybody, uh, so I just started the live stream. It's about 11 a.m. Central Time, and so I just wanted to um, kind of finish out the first problem that we started yesterday with some explanation. I, I've been changing this around left and right, back and forth, um, and, and got it to got it to this current uh, spot. Um, Again, there's there's multiple solutions that are acceptable. This is just one of them. So if you have one of my prior solutions that I've shown, and you just want to turn that in, and you know, that that's all fine. Um, the the thing that I want to point out here, and, and it's on the requirements. You know, um, we get this invalid weight for these two different scenarios. So when when we have a format exception. You know, you're not using the typical format exception message here. Instead, we say invalid weight. And then when it's out of range, uh, it, we also get out uh, invalid weight. So in this one, it's not a range uh, validation that we're doing. Um, it's, it's more of a type validation. In other, in other words, they entered a letter type instead of a numeric type. And so we've got type validation on number one, which is a format exception, and then we've got a range validation, which is number two, which is our custom exception that we coded. And then number three kind of does the same thing, the type validation for your, for your height instead of your weight, and then we do the range validation for your height instead of your weight. And then it says, okay, if all those are good, then, then display the BMI. So kind of uh, wanted to take a minute and talk through this. Uh, and what we're doing here. So, um, the, the one thing that's unique about this solution that's different than some of my prior solutions is that we have nested, um, oh actually there is no nested, this is even a different solution. I, I'm, I'm crossed in my own mind. Let me take a step back and let's just, let's just talk through this step by step. So we got our outer try block here and you'll notice we declare some variables and we try and convert the text box into a float. And remember the try parse returns true or false. So this right here will return true or false and then this will flip it. So if the conversion works that returns true and this flips it to not. So if the conversion works, we do not execute this throw. But if the conversion doesn't work, this try parse would return false, the not would return it to true, and we would throw an invalid weight exception. And so essentially what we're we're handling here per our requirements is we are handling the format exception uh, built into this try parse. And so even though we're not catching a format exception, um, this way when we throw an invalid weight exception here, and again, this is, I guess, a little bit more complex of a solution that I've shown in the past. So if you saw any of my other solutions, I think that I've wound up doing three or four of them, right? Um, in, in the other solutions, I actually caught a format exception, but it just wasn't a very necessarily clean solution. I would say this is a little bit more clean. Um, so here we throw the exception here, we throw the exception here. So here's two places where we can throw an exception and remember that when you throw this exception it immediately jumps down to the catch block skipping anything beneath it right so if these exceptions are thrown uh, up kind of manually then then it goes down to the catch block and invalid height exception because obviously we're ch checking for height. And so 
that would cause us to run the catch block. Now in our BMI method calc BMI, uh, you'll notice in calc BMI there's also a throw invalid weight exception. And I don't know that I even finished this off for the height. And I need to do the same for the height, looking at the requirements. Uh, and someone pointed out this morning that, you know, 84 inches isn't very tall, but that's okay. That's just the requirement for, for this fake scenario. Uh, if the user enters a height of less than 60 or more than 84, then display invalid height. And so let's pull that back up. Less than 60, more than 84. If height in inches is less than 60, or height in inches, 84 is the number? Yep. Invalid height exception. Okay, and um, so you'll notice that solution that should clean that up. Um, another thing that was pointed out, if I run this, um, it's only going to throw one exception at a time. You're not going to get both validation errors. Uh, we could get that um, to where it would display invalid weight if we added some, you know, conditional if else's and maybe a few other things um, for the point of this lab that's that's an optional thing so if we say the height of uh, we get invalid height if we put in a letter we get invalid height if we say 55 invalid weight and then we put in something in the range for our weight of uh, 200 pounds uh, we gotta have a valid height which is more than 60 and you get the calculation okay so that was the first one I just wanted to clean that up again multiple solutions that would be considered acceptable this is the latest evolution of this one moving on to the second lab pop open the requirements for the second lab here. Um, so we're dealing with uh, order exceptions. You can see we've got three different exceptions that we're going to manually create. And we've got three text boxes. So any one of these uh, has a, like a range value. You can see there's a range here. There's a range on the quantity. And uh, there's a range on the days. So we have three range validations. And then a note, if the constructor or a setter attempts to input an invalid value, then throw an appropriate exception. So what that says to me is that we're going to be throwing exceptions in a constructor and we'll be throwing exceptions in the set blocks of these properties. Okay, so um, we could start by building out the form. We could start by building out the order. Um, Obviously, that is up to you. I'll go ahead and um, use my prior lab from doing this before to kind of copy over the controls. And, and that'll help me develop this a little bit faster. So just copy over the controls. Let's take a look. These labels. Uh, not so important on their names, but let's name the text box text item num. That's good. TXT quantity. That's good. TXT estimated delivery. That's good. We got a BTN validate and a label result, which will just clear out the text there. We got our button validate click so so that's nice and uh, 
quick and easy. So let me close everything that's not relevant here. Pull up the UML and we see we've got an order class with some instance fields and a constructor and some properties. So let's, let's drag that over to another screen and let's go ahead and create that order class. Mark it as public. Classes are typically public. Make our instance fields. Private short underscore item number. Okay, now we're going to have our constructor. Now keep in mind, uh, we're going to have to throw an exception here. So we're going to come back to this. pretty standard constructor and we've got some properties for all three fields so Keep in mind, we'll be coming back to this as well. And the third one, All right, so there's our order class. Now we can make our exception classes next. Uh, people just started messaging me that my microphone is cutting out. Can you guys not hear me? Hello. Okay, I'm going to pause this recording. Okay, we're back. I just had some technical difficulties. Um, the The recording should be good. I don't think the microphone's going to go out. It's just a local, a local recording, so no big deal there. Um, I created the interface and I've created the order class, but I'm going to go ahead and create these exceptions that extend argument exception uh, just like we did in the prior lab and so invalid item number exception
market is public. Yeah, I'm having internet uh, difficulties, which is really rare. I've I've had I've had my current internet set up for two to three years now with the same router, same uh, same everything, and it's not until this morning. I've never literally even dropped Wi-Fi connection until this morning, so I'm not sure what's going on. I rebooted my router, I rebooted all my PCs. Um, something's causing my Wi-Fi to chop in and chop out, so I'm tethering off of my phone right now. So that's fun. Uh, back to the lab. Invalid quantity exception. And invalid delivery days exception. Okay, um, says throw an appropriate exception, doesn't really give us any indication as far as what the out, the error should be, so I'm just going to give it a generic er uh, error for each, so I'll just say, just say invalid quantity, makes sense. So that's easy enough. Invalid item number. Good there, an invalid height exception. Oh, that's from the other one. Let me pull up the UML again, make sure we're getting all this. Okay, so now our exceptions are created. One, two, three. Okay, um, what I'm thinking is that since we're going to be checking for your item number in two places, in both the order constructor and in the set block, I'll make a little method for it and I'll just call that method, right? Since we're going to, instead of repeating the code twice, so um, let me minimize m each one of these. Obviously, you don't have to write a method, but what the heck? Public, uh, private. Let me write the logic once, and then I might extract it into a method. So item number is between the range of 100 and 99. So it's going to uh, be if item number that's being passed in is greater than or equal to 100 and item number less than or equal to 999 then we can set the item number um, 
you could reverse this logic if item number is outside of that range, then you throw the exception. So I'm just thinking of a reversal of this logic, so just thinking as I go. If item number is less than 100 or item number greater than 999, throw new invalid item number. And so we could take that logic and put it in a method. Let's finish this up. Quantity must be between the range of 1 and 12 inclusive. So if quantity less than 1 or quantity greater than 12, Delivery days, estimated delivery days, less than one, oops, the other range is if it's greater than 30, throw new And so if we were to write a method that would do that, I would say private void check and then you can cut and paste this into here. And then you just gotta call the method check delivery days. Passing it estimated delivery days. Check quantity and quantity is a byte. So now the, the exception is still being thrown in the constructor, but the constructor is calling another method to just wrap that logic in there. And if it's not caught in this method, like I've said in the, in the lecture, it'll bubble up into the constructor. And if the constructor doesn't have a catch block, uh, it'll bubble up into the form. Um, and so let's do the last thing for item number. Item number is a short okay. A 
Okay, so now we just call those methods. If any one of those methods, uh, if, if any one of those ranges are out of range, it'll throw an exception and it will never set the values. The values, so uh, instance fields uh, do not get set if an exception occurs or exception is thrown. So assuming that these don't throw exceptions, they're all valid, and we, we set the we set the instance fields. Now what's nice here is that we wrote the methods, and we could call check item number and pass in value here instead of writing that same logic twice. And so now let's set the quantity. We'll check quantity passing in the value and on the set block of the estimated check estimated check delivery days passing in value okay so now we've done we've we've triggered the exception to be thrown we have not caught the exception and so if we actually go back to our form and we put in some invalid data, let's kind of go back here, clean all that up. Okay. So we go back to the form. Let's run the form. And let's put in 99, 1, and 1. Validate. Oh, I didn't do anything on the button click yet. I haven't coded my. I haven't coded my button click. So obviously, to get that button to do anything, we need to code that. Um, regardless of whether we use the constructor or the property, um, this will work. So we'll say order. And if we use the constructor the first is the item number text item number dot text next is the byte so we'll say byte dot parse text quantity and the third argument is a byte for the delivery estimated delivery days okay so we create our object called my order and I just want to see this crash um, if I put in a bad number he said invalid item number so the exception was thrown invalid item number that's what I would expect if I run it again, obviously we don't have a try catch block, so it's just crashing everything. So if I say 0, 130, it should say invalid quantity. That's, that's right. And if I change that back to 1 and I change that to 31, validate, we get invalid delivery date. So our exceptions are working. All good there. All that's left is to wrap this in a try catch. Try. catch and invalid item number invalid quantity So if our errors pop up, instead of crashing our program, now we just get a little error message to the user displaying the error message. But if the order is all good, then we'll say label result.txt is 
order valid. So if no exception was thrown, we just output order valid. We'll clear the label result.txt each time we click the button. And that should work. So let's do a good one first. Order valid. Let's give it an invalid delivery day. That's good. Invalid quantity. That's good. And that's valid if I say 1,000. Invalid item number. So that's working. Uh, so that's that's the second lab. Hopefully you guys were able to get close to that on your own. That one wasn't too bad. Just what's new here, um, this is not new, that's not new, that's not new. What was new is essentially throwing, throwing an exception and letting that exception bubble up. You notice we didn't catch this exception in this method. We could have. Uh, we could we we could have wrapped all this in a try catch. You know that's probably not common, right? You're, you're not commonly going to catch uh, an exception in the same method that you throw it. You typically let it bubble up to the point where someone else is using your code and they can decide if they want to catch it um, or crash the program. And so we don't catch the exception here. So check delivery days. You notice we could wrap we could wrap this method in a try catch. We could wrap all we could put all of these in one try and then catch it inside of the constructor. But we didn't we didn't catch it inside of the instructor. In, in constructor instead we let it bubble up into our form, and this is where we wrote our try catch. And and what's nice about that is we let the we let the person who's coding the order determine whether they want to catch the exception or how they want to handle it if they want to handle it at all. So so that's kind of the new part. The new part is to throw the exception inside of a method, whether it's a constructor or another method, and then let that bubble up. So that's something we have not covered um, yet. So this recording is about 32 minutes long. I kind of summarized the first lab, finished the second lab. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and get a start on the third lab today and into tonight, um, obviously tomorrow we will review that as a class. So I'm going to stop the recording here.